There will be many times in life when you're about to be re-triggered into an old cycle. The answer is to go down the known path, the predictable path, where you believe all circumstances to be controlled. And many times we walk back into these old situations, these old universes, and we find that they were never quite what they originally were. That each and every time, they are piece and piece further removed from that authentic moment. A tunnel will break its way through the forest of trees and allow you a new way through when you are in the moment, when you are least expecting it. The spiritual journey really cannot be planned. It needs to be lived. It needs to be felt. It needs to be listened to in the same way one would intently listen to a podcast or a television series, a, a, a movie with a long and in-depth plot. There is constantly feedback being sent back to you. Receive this feedback knowing that life is too short for each and every moment not to be filled with a sacred message, with something that is meaningful and important. That nothing just happens by chance. See all disrupts, see all disruptions and all shortcomings. See all things that pivot you away from the world that you thought you were living. These are all things that are curating your soul. These are all things that are helping to improve you to rise up for that moment you are actually looking for. The biggest mistake anyone can make is thinking they already know everything that is that they're looking for in life. They haven't even begun to feel out the infinite possibilities of everything. They haven't explored the untasted, the untouched, the unfelt. They haven't immersed their senses in enough environments. And so by the time you have, you will have found what you're looking for. You'll know it because it resonates with you. It's true to you feels one, it feels apart, it feels like home. Home is never this place that we create for ourselves. Of brick and stone, of wood, of permanence. Impermanence is a language of the universe. And impermanence helps us to be able to understand that not all things are meant to be linear. That sometimes we gotta go back the other way when the universe gives you too much resistance, you need to see that that's not the path. Traveling through these woods, I run into a number of people, all of them at completely different levels of vibration. I come here because the energy is clean, it is crisp. It is easy to receive direct transmission. And for this reason, whether people are aware of it or not, they also choose to participate in the direct transmission. Some come here to dwell on their sorrows, their frustrations. Some people wear it. And so when you can sense that, the intelligent person reads the energy of a situation rather than involving themselves. And they involve themselves once things prove themselves promising. It's important to create a level of energetic flow so that when there are things coming up in front of you, you're able to adapt and seamlessly move through. But there are other times where you really have to have those barriers. You need to be able to say, I'm not dealing with this today, I'm walking the other way. You are not here to solve people's problems. And a lot of people have fallen into a virtue signaling culture. It's about being right. It's about having the authority of the, of the all. The all is far above and beyond you and me. So much that there are countless layers of divinity between here and there. Why do we connect with different entities, different beings and spiritualism? Why do we practice what comes off as a many God or many entity culture versus just one God? There are hierarchies to things, and there are things that are legitimately your business and your problem, and there are things that just aren't. There are things that are far above and beyond you. There are things that also have little care 
for you. Things that are quite indifferent. The all cares not which of you survives today, tomorrow, flourishes today, tomorrow. Cares not who or what does, just simply knows and trusts that they will do. In the same way, the mechanical toy maker knows the toy mouse is going to work when they wind it up. One of these is going to trick the cat. So many useful resources available to you everywhere at all times just creates and requires your creative edge to be more improved. Your creativity is going to supply for you more than you could ever imagine. We live in a world where value is represented by currency and there's a lot of shame around money and currency. The feeling that money is control, money is rules, money is evil, money is used by both good and evil, money is energy, currency is energy. You have to be able to access the current. The free person is not the person who is making more. The person who has the largest privilege is the person who is able to craft the terms of their everyday circumstances. They get to decide, ultimately, what it is that they are doing and what is worthwhile to time. How do you want to be spending your day? How do you want to be spending your day? And these are important things to ask yourself. Yes, you probably have these suave skills that could be enlisted to serve the interests and needs of some company whose interests and needs are very removed from yours. The conversation that I begin to have with people is the first question is because there are two roads. You have a high level responsibility outside of yourself. People such as family, family people, whether that is someone who's playing a significant role in someone else's life, regardless of how they are related. And then we have people who are the bottom line. They are the only one looking out for themselves. You are either someone who's looking out for yourself and others. Or you right now at this point in your life, you just got to look out for yourself. If there isn't serious consequence for you walking away from something, it does not pass the responsibility test. For example, if your job can replace you tomorrow, it does not pass that responsibility test. So if your responsibility is replaceable, then it's not a responsibility. And if you fall into this first category, there is no reason for you to not be able to stop whatever it is that you are doing or not like doing and start doing it at least with a different flair, a different intention and having faith that at the end of the day, what you contribute is going to provide for what it is that you actually need. There's a big list of what we think we need, right? But what we genuinely need and crave is authentic and real experience. Authentic and real experience is not cultivated within a predictable environment. It is cultivated within a spontaneous one. Learning to be more spontaneous with the way that you act and reach people, the way that you feel, is going to get you what you're looking for. Because each and every day is filled with wonder. You're a little child celebrated for the holidays filled with wonder of what that day is going to be. It comes. It's a big deal. Well, you've done it a few times. You've grown older and it lacks its luster. It's not because that feeling goes away for that feeling is only for children. It just simply requires more energy, intention, direction, and effort to bring back that nostalgia of, ooh, it's the holiday. It's the holiday. It's a new year, everybody. Yay. Getting that thrill back, that childlike curiosity, it helps to open the doors and to create the adventure. 
The adventure starts with you as the main character and it cannot start in any other way. If you are not the main character of your story, you gotta get out. Simple as that. You deserve to be the main character in your story. And if you are sidelined, forget about it. Situation requires adjustments. Now, we have talked enough about the first group and what they need to do in order to get on track with their highest spiritual intention, their dream and their goal. Now the second group, people who hold responsibilities. Perhaps you have people who require your constant attention regardless of their age and your care. And the moment you drop the ball, you drop the ball for everybody, including you and them. Now here's the good news for this group of people. The good news is that spirit is real and spirit is aware. Spirit is very aware of who is doing what, of who is bringing and carrying society forward, literally, and who right now is still working on how to, how to just get out of their own way. And because you are grappling with the forefront of psychic growth and development, children, or at the opposite end of the spectrum, people who require support because they are preparing to re-begin the cycle. This requires a high level of patience, responsibility, love and care, and it is rewarded. It is rewarded with more blessings, more luck, more fortune than you could ever imagine. Always realize that your situation, if it seems weighted, also has its leverage. And so is the equilibrium of life. Trust that spirit is keeping track of who assumes responsibility and will create doorways much more easier than for the person whose responsibility is currently only themselves. Many things will come to work with you, to harmonize with you. The only thing you need to worry about is getting through today. You get through today. You see today to its full completion, to its absolute best. Because today is in the now. And in the now is where we find gems of knowledge. Troves of information. Experience. It's having faith in the many systems that are working around you constantly. And in assuming responsibility is actually the hack to getting more. You can only get more once you assume the responsibility of others. Because the moment you assume the responsibility for others, there are many forces in this world that are looking to see those responsibilities be brought to completion. That those who are still the first thing that is in their way know nothing of what true gifts and blessings look like because they have never offered the hand outside of themselves in a deeper way. And having that genuine energy to give, giving is receiving. The doorways that open when you give versus when you take are extremely different. When someone does something because they want the money, it's very different than when they do it because of the genuine relationships that have been created. And those require authenticity. Those require being in the moment. Those are far more valuable than anything that money can buy. Your harmonized relationships. And each and every individual can harmonize themselves from whatever place within society. The glow that could come over you, that draws others to assist you, that draws opportunities to be open to your eyes. These things become ever more apparent. If you are overcumbered with responsibility and obligation, you feel that life is extremely stressful because you cannot make the proper time for yourself. There is always a way. The way requires a little bit of creative incentive. You cannot do things in a linear fashion. So many people build their plans in a linear way and become very frustrated when these stones, these stacks of stones crumble. And the stacks of stones crumble 
because they were never meant to be standing still. An object in motion stays in motion and is also creating momentum and attraction in itself. To be living is to be pursuing. Most books out there are a regurgitation or a mockery of the great works that have already been done. Most books are completely useless to you. Most of them. It takes a lot of effort to find quality text. So therefore, your 80% should not be invested in the text. At least not the consuming of it. Your 80% needs to be focused on creation. A wise man once taught me, for everything that you learn, you should devote an equal amount of time to creation. So if you are learning from spiritual teachers or from spiritual books, you are looking outside of yourself for knowledge. With all that knowledge that you accumulate, you should dedicate towards particular action. There should be follow through on what you've learned. There should be application so data can be collected. Your body has that muscle memory. It knows what it feels. And you have to be able to curate more of these experiences. I said this earlier, the child who is so excited for New Year's Day. It's a new year. That energy is still within you. It hasn't gone any anywhere. It just requires a little bit more patience, a little more intention, a lot more creativity. You have to dedicate yourself to seeing your dreams come true. And the experience is going to mesmerize you. It's going to make you cry. It's going to make you laugh. It's going to make you angry. It's going to make you filled with leaping laughter. The road is meant to be felt with the complete palettes. You're not meant to neglect any parts of your palate, your brain, but yet so many people are walking around using just about 10% of theirs. Let's maximize that capacity. Let's put that energy and that intention forward. Let's see what infectious positivity can do. Now there's toxic positivity. Toxic, poly, to, toxic positivity is used to gloss over issues in a way to undermine their importance. Because what is often perceived as negativity, negativity is often just urgency to address deeper underlying issues. Toxic positivity is used to dismiss people and silence people. It's used to generate and create a status quo of how and when kindness, generosity, and shame is shared and delivered. Authentic positivity creates laughter onto itself. Authentic positivity comes from the heart and soul and requires no rules and regula regulations. It's able to come up with the right answer within the moment for the moment because the intention in itself is just. The authentic positivity is busy doing what they love and is not distracted by what gathers and gains others' attention. Conformity is taught and is preached to be the key to extraordinary success in life. And I'm here to teach you the opposite. That once you open up that path least travel, you're going to be filled with excitement for the never ending story that has been prepared for you. The many worlds for you to go and travel, the many experiences to be felt and shared. Your life is unique, yet it is one. It is important for all cells within the whole to be able to have rejuvenative properties, to be able to improve upon themselves and adapt to forever changing environment. And the part you play 
will be rewarded with new substance, substance, nutrients, love and flow. Know that you are blessed and know that you are connected to everyone and everything. But what you have sole individual control over is how you feel today and how you choose to react to the unfolding world around you. By taking control, you recognize your limited control and you are able to step back into a frequency that helps to make you and everything around you whole and match that eternal memory that has been forgotten so long ago. My divinity into yours, friends. Apprenticeship training in the magical craft is available at seldomdreams.com. It's not about handing you my blueprints or someone who has passed long ago their blueprints. It's about helping you to create them authentically for yourself through the muscle memory, the resonation, the vibrations that are present in here. The direct transmission is capable. It is here for you to achieve and to accomplish. By honing these skills, you're able to have access to the eternal knowledge pool and all the things that come with it, all the technology that comes with it, and the world that just seems to open up in front of you. My divinity into yours. And until next time, blessings and take care.